welcome to my classroom in this biochemical engineering course model number one in lecture number seven we have been discussing about cell lysis or cell disruption techniques right so we have seen there are several type of uh, uni uh, cell disruption techniques are available based on either mechanical in the mechanical we have seen some solid shear or liquid shear right and we have seen some techniques based on physical methods like osmotic shock osmotic shock or thermolysis or decompression methods and in chemical methods we have seen detergents can be used alkali treatment can be done chelating agents can be used or antibiotics can be used and we have seen some enzymatic techniques like lytic enzymes are there which can be used to carry out the cell disruption techniques right so in this lecture number 8 we will discuss about cell nutrition I hope you had your food properly, right? So, we how what kind of food we take? Some people will just take food for the sake of taking the food, or some of us live like a foodie, right? See, we live to eat, or are there some people who eat to live, right? So that's why people can be classified. So, but for every one of us, it is important for our body to take some nutrition in, into our body because our body cannot produce all the nutrients that are essential for its function, right? So, our cells need that nutrition, right? So, if you look at the cell nutrition, uh, how we take food, we can fuel our cells by eating some wholesome, nutritious food, right? So, we can supply the abundance of vitamins and minerals into our body by taking some uh, nutritious food. Okay, but how we nourish our soul? So even though food can be there, a large amount of food can be available, right? But we prefer to eat at certain locations. Say, for example, I like to take at my mom's food. I like to even if five uh, restaurants are there, five messes are there in our campus. I prefer to eat in this mess because we prefer to. We are want to nourish our soul, our soul by energizing it by listening to our hunger cues to decide what to eat, when to eat, and how much to eat, right? So that's why we enjoy, in one word I can say that we like to eat some delicious food. Okay, so why these uh, nutrition are important to our body? Because in our body, any growth or even any repairing, we need some nutrient in our body, right? The cells require cells and tissues require some energy nutrient because they contain proteins protein is essential for the growth and the repair and maintenance of our good health okay so protein provides the body around 10 to 15 percentage of its dietary energy and it is the second most abundant constituent in our body next to water okay uh, how our body or cells are naturally repairing itself when we are ill we always see that people bringing us apple or pomegranates are right so why because when for the repairing of our cells we need some alkaline foods okay, if you take some alkaline foods intake then it will repair and renew our body cells okay so that's why pomegranate is used mushrooms are there broccoli berries or oregano's plums and apples we should consume if we want to repair our cells okay and what is a cell? So we have seen that a cell is made up of micromolecules and macromolecules. And if you look at the elemental analysis of a cell, we will, it is made up of primarily made up of four elements like carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen, and other components like phosphorus, manganese, magnesium, cobalt are also present in small quantities in our body. Okay, so uh, when water is the major constituent in our body, it accounts to 98 percentage of the cell. We know that, and among the the solid constituents are among the macromolecules that are present in the our cells 55 percent is proteins okay so that is a percentage of protein present in our cells okay what is that proteins mean protein means it, it is derived from a greek word called proteas primarily required or primarily present in a cell okay so proteins are high molecular weight compounds so and pro if you look at what this protein is doing in our body, protein will do some wide variety of functions uh, and we can classify them into two major things, right? So one is like it, it does some static function or uh, structural function. What is this structural function means? It is, it is, it is doing the role of a brick and mortar in a building. Okay, what is the role of the brick and mortar in this one? They provide the structure and the strength uh, to the building, right? Same way, these proteins 
are responsible for the structure and the strength of a body okay for example if i consider collagen and elastin they are found in our bone matrix and in our vascular system skins and tendons it is the substance which is responsible to hold the body together so these collagens form a scaffold to provide strength and structure to our skins also so with the age that's why wrinkles are coming into picture so this endogenous collagen is a natural collagen synthesized by the body and exogenous collagen is synthetic it comes from an outside source such as supplements so you might have seen several advertisements to take care of that skin wrinkling so that is collagen peptides are available from different manufacturers to eat okay so peptides okay so these elastin fibrils are present in the whole body and they have a role to stabilize our collagen fibers also so they around 50% uh, in artery 20% in lungs and 2 to 5% in dermic layer of the skin they are present so again it can be taken as a supplement also several products are available in the market okay if you look you might have heard this word in shampoo advertisements also this alpha keratin is found in our epidermal tissues and if this keratin is one of the family of fibrous structural proteins uh, which are known as uh, scleroproteins this alpha keratin is a type of keratin found in the vertebrates mainly so it is the key structural material making up our uh, hair nail feathers horns claws hooves calluses and outer layer of skin among vertebrates so when there is a deficiency there are several thing available which can be used this proteins uh, will contain around 20 amino acids like uh, it may be a primary secondary tertiary or quaternary structure different structure remember there are uh, 200 uh, amino acids may be there but one 20 are we have highly identified or we are able to account it okay and uh, these are the some static function and its examples and if you look at the dynamic functions of a protein so the protein act like uh, enzymes hormones they act like blood clotting factors immunoglobulins and membrane receptors, storage proteins, they do a role in gene control and muscle contraction, respiration, etc. All these places, these proteins are playing role and they are the workhorses in a cell. Workhorses in the sense, they keep working continuously, right? When you say oh, a person is workaholic, that means he is more dedicated towards work, he doesn't get distracted, he keeps working on the target right so that way uh, these proteins are also some working horses they are behave like working horses in the cell okay but because proteins and their expression forms not just proteins their expression forms also represent the functional form of a dna informations in the cell stored okay and what is this elemental composition of this protein this protein constitutes like uh, what is the major constituent if we have, we have seen generally four elements are there in any cells right so carbon nitrogen oxygen right uh, <coughs> sulfur also there right so if you look at the percentage composition of them uh, carbon constitutes uh, 50 to 55 percentage hydrogen is around 6 to 7 percentage oxygen may vary from 19 to 25 percentage nitrogen content is on an average some 13 to 14 percentage will be there okay so you can say that maximum of 19 percentage can be there that nitrogen sulfur it may be zero or it can be maximum of four percent so that way sulfur in sulfur content in a protein will be zero to four percentage and other elements like obviously like phosphorus iron copper um, manganese zinc etc also there in it okay well we will discuss about the classification of proteins I hope you have learned all this in our earlier courses or in schools also. It's just I am summing it up with uh, classification. Okay, so if you, you can remember, you can classify the protein based on the composition or the solubility, or you can uh, classify the proteins based on the nutritious value. You can classify the protein based on the shape and size of the proteins, or you can classify them on basis of uh, function of proteins. What is the role they are playing? Okay, sometimes they play a structural role, catalytic role, hormonal role, defense role, transport role, like that. Okay, so that we will see now. So, if you ask me what is the classification table, we can classify mainly based on the four categories. One is on the basis of composition and solubility of proteins. Then we have nutritive values of the protein or on the basis of the shape and size of the protein or on the basis of the function it is performing. Okay, or the role it is 
performing. Okay, so first case is the basis of uh, composition and uh, solubility of the proteins that can be classified, subclassified into three categories. One is simple proteins. The so simple proteins are like fibrous proteins or globular proteins come under simple proteins or it can be a conjugated proteins. So when you say conjugated proteins, it can be classified, uh, further classified as nucleoproteins, glycoproteins, chromoproteins, phosphoproteins, metalloproteins and lipoproteins. Okay, and we have derived proteins which can be further classified into primary de primary derived proteins or secondary derived protein in the way fashion it which was derived. Okay, and the second classification of protein is based on the nutritive value of the proteins. Okay, where some can be complete, some can be incomplete, some can be partially complete. So that way they can be classified as complete proteins, partially complete proteins, and incomplete proteins okay and uh, third classification of protein can be based on the shape and size of the protein either it is uh, whether it is fibrous protein or globular protein so if it is in a spherical shape we can call it as globular proteins or if it is uh, a thing other way it is fibrous protein okay and if you want to classify the proteins based on their functional functions uh, okay so we, they can be classified as structural protein Catalytic protein, hormonal proteins, defense protein, transport proteins, blood clotting proteins, storage proteins, carrier proteins, receptor proteins, signal transcription proteins, buffer proteins, nuclear proteins, contract contractile proteins. With it, so remember each one will have their different, have their own structure and molecular weight. Okay. We should able to give examples for each type of proteins. For example, globular protein, when you ask me, albumins, globumins, glutenins, prolaminins, histones, globins, protamines, they all come under global proteins. Whereas scleroprotein is also a type of simple protein. Which, uh, examples for uh, scleroproteins are collagens, elastins, and keratins. And example for conjugated proteins are nucleoproteins, glycoproteins, mucoproteins, lipoproteins, phosphoproteins, chromoproteins and metalloproteins. And if you ask example for uh, derived proteins, example for primary derived proteins are conjugated proteins, proteins, metaproteins. Whereas example for secondary derived proteins are proteoses, peptones, polypeptides and peptides. So they are the classification of protein based on their chemical composition okay so we have seen that the protein contains 20 different type of amino acids minimum okay so actually in nature there are 300 amino acids are present in the nature more than 300 type of different structurally different amino acids are present but only 20 are known and they are called the standard amino proteins these 20 amino acids are identified and we are able to identify that when you do analysis okay and mostly these amino acids are derived from plants animals and microorganisms these amino acids are obtained from plants animals and microorganisms remember what is amino acid structurally they will have two functional groups okay one is a basic group, one is acidic in nature, one is basic in nature. Example, the basic uh, nature group is amino groups. Okay, whereas the carboxyl group is the acidic in nature. So we have a amino basic group and a acidic group. Amino group is the basic group, carboxyl group is the acidic group. Okay. And uh, say for example, if you ask me both these uh, amino oxyl group and carboxyl group, how they are attached? Are they attached to different carbons? Tell me, is the amino groups and carboxyl group attached to different carbons or they are attached to same carbon? Yes, so this is at this both amino groups as well as carboxyl groups are attached to the same carbon group. Okay, and remember there is an R, another R group which is different from amino acids. So that is also attached to the same carbon. Okay, so the uh, if you ask me the structure, there will be amino group, carbon and uh, carboxyl group. So we know C is at, uh, C will have four bonds. So two is um, or two, uh, two are amino groups and carboxyl groups. So third one is side chain and uh, another fourth one is hydrogen. Okay. And we have seen these amino acids are monomeric units of proteins. Okay, there are 21 specific amino acids commonly found in the cells. All these will contain 
carboxylic group and amino group and bond between these two groups is called as peptide bond okay what is a peptide bond peptide bond is a bond between two groups one is carboxylic group and amino group. Uh, one is acidic in nature one is basic in nature and both are uh, attached to the same carbon right and we have seen this uh, amino acid constitutes this protein this polymers uh, proteins are actually polymers which are made by the cells and the two key roles of the protein is like catalytic protein or structural protein and the primary structure of a protein is the, uh, generally a linear array of amino acids okay a given primary structure is consistent with only certain type of foldings okay and what about the secondary structures or folded proteins they are uh, they will determine the biological activity of a cell okay and there are some uh, structure also higher order structure is there secondary structure will continue to fold to form even more stable molecules like tertiary structure at this stage may be so form disulfide bonds between the sulfide rail groups of cysteine residues a quaternary structure can also be formed if a protein consists of two or more different polypeptides you can consider hemoglobin hemoglobin is a quaternary structure okay in this a protein will consist two or more different polypeptides okay i have seen told you that amino acids contain amine group and carboxylic group they are biologically important organic compounds made from amine and carboxylic groups okay so the properties of amino groups depends upon the nature of the r group okay yes. even if it is simply h it is going to be glycine amino acids are covalent groups they are water soluble crystalline substances and have very high melting points like salt okay then the salt like structure of this amino acid is called as sweeter ion what is vitrion so in the amino acids the transfer of proton from acidic group to amino group the resultant formed compound is called as vitrion remember they have both positively charged and negatively charged ions so that's why we are able to get this type of one so this vitrion molecules have both positive and negative charges but with a net charge of zero vitrion molecules have net charge of zero remember these amino acids are building blocks of proteins and we have seen there are 21 amino acids which is known to present in the living bodies and they can be further classified into essential and non essential amino acids so there are nine essential amino acids and there are 12 non essential amino acids so essential amino acids are histidine comes under essential and we have alanine which comes under non essential amino acids and we have isoleucine which is essential amino acid arginine is a non essential amino acid and we have leucine which is essential amino acid and we have aspartic acid which is non essential amino acid and we have lysine which is an essential amino acid and we have cysteine which is non essential amino acid and we have methionine which is an essential one and we have glutamic acid which is non essential amino acid and we have phenylalanine and we have glutamine which is non essential and we have threonine which is essential amino acid and glycine which is a non essential amino acid and we have tryptophan which is an essential amino acid and we have proline which is non essential amino acids so these are some of the things and we have still valine essential serine non essential tyrosine non essential asparagine non essential selenocysteine non essential we will see them in the detail so among the 21 amino acids first category is the one which is electrically charged side chains are present in the structure and there are three positively charged amino acids and two negatively charged amino acids you can see the structure given here there is a positively charged side chain you can see that the arg which is arginine his which is histidine and lys which is lysine so they are simply it is abbreviated as arg his and lys and similarly there are two negatively charged uh, amino acids one is aspartic acid and glutamic acid so you can see the structure is having a negatively charged side chains and then we have amino acids with polar uncharged side chains so in that we have serrathir and asn and gln so they are serine threonine 
asparagin and glutamine so you can see the structure given below and then we have a special case of uh, amino acids like cysteine serinocysteine glycine and proline so you can go through the structures in this one and we have this uh, amino acids with hydrophobic side chains you can see alanine valine isoleucine leucine methionine phenylalanine tyrosine and tryptophan so these are all some of the amino acids with hydrophobic side chains attached to it so they are uh, hydrophobic in nature these side chains you can see the structures of them please note that these amino acids are uh, primary structure uh, they are actually supported on a secondary structure called as uh, it may be in the shape of helix means it is alpha helix one and if it is in a linear sheet model it is called uh, beta pleated sheets so you can see the structure here so all of them are actually bound by these hydrogen and co bonds okay, so you can see that they as we know this primary structure is comprised of a linear chain of amino acids and whereas the secondary structure contains regions of amino acid chains that are stabilized by hydrogen bonds from the peptide polypeptide backbones okay if we consider a smallest protein no that is a human albumin it's a globular protein that is based on the shape it is called as globular so it is a globular protein and if you look at the molecular weight its molecular weight is uh, 66.5 it consists of a single chain of 585 amino acids organized in three repeated homolog domains you can see that site 1 site 2 and site 3 and each domain comprises two separate subdomains a and b as shown in this figure so this is the smallest human protein you can see how complex the structure is micronutrients for our body because all these nutrients are not available so we understand that for a protein we need to for protein is responsible for the function repairing or maintenance of our body or cells in our body so we have to continuously supply nutrients to them these nutrients can be classified into macronutrients and micronutrients because these cells require organic compounds such as their carbon source these our cells are our microorganisms they use the uh, microorganism will use these organic compounds to make the cell wall also right so that way there are different type of uh, made, uh, organic compounds available if you ask me example for organic compound we have seen amino acids fatty acids sugars nitrogen bases or aromatic compounds they all constitute organic matters whereas uh, if you ask example for what you, uh, i told you that macronutrients are there micronutrients are there so what is macronutrient what is micronutrient so what is primarily required by the body they are called macronutrients their con their concentration i have defined you in the previous lecture how much it is required concentration level okay similarly we have micronutrients also okay so what is macronutrient i told you in the first lecture also that the nutrients required by the cells at a concentration greater than 10 power minus 4 m they are called as macronutrients when the nutrients required by the cell are below less than 10 power minus 4 m they are called as micronutrients i gave you examples also for on the day carbon nitrogen oxygen hydrogen sulfur phosphor magnesium potassium they all constitute macronutrients whereas micronutrients are like zinc copper manganese calcium sodium vitamins growth hormones or metabolic precursors or like amino acids they all come under cell nutrition okay and even we have discussed about the growth media what is a minimal media what is a rich media so a minimal or defined medium will supply only the minimal nutrition required by the particular organism they will contain specific amounts of pure chemical compounds like chemical compound is the known compositions we may we will able to identify them which chemical composition it is having okay whereas a rich or complex medium contains a wide variety of nutrients most of which are derived from natural products like yeast extract okay so use chemical composition is not precisely known 
but anyhow they are needed by uh, to support the growth of a wide range of organisms okay so this growth medium can be a reduced growth medium okay so that means it will involve the addition of a reducing agent like the thioglycolate or cysteine or ascorbate to the medium the purpose of uh, using this reducing medium is to remove the oxygen we want to re remove the oxygen so that whatever is anaerobic microorganism are present in the system they will able to grow well okay so that is another type of growth media called as a differential medium a yeah, differential medium is the one which allows two or more different type of uh, organisms to grow but it will contain some dyes or other components upon which this different microorganism will act in various ways to produce a wide variety of end product or effects are even detected by variation which can be detected using the change in the color and there are other type of media called as a selective medium what is the selective medium they will support the growth of a desired organisms by inhibiting the growth of the other unwanted microorganism so what is like like it will be poison to other microorganism it will allow the this desired microorganism to grow okay so by purposefully adding one or more selective agents which will poison certain type of microorganisms by including or deleting certain nutrients such that the desired organism only will grow in the system okay so that is called a selective medium so which will use selective agents and if you ask me what are the examples for macronutrients required by the cells or micronutrients required by the cells so the macronutrients are required in larger quantities right so phosphorus sulfur potassium magnesium and calcium these are the macronutrients required by us microorganisms whereas my micronutrients examples are chromium cobalt copper manganese molybdenum nickel zinc and iron so these are some of the examples for micronutrient record in small quantities by the things okay so this primary secondary you can say larger quantity smaller quantity as the name implies macronutrients are primarily required are in they are required in large quantity by the cells whereas micronutrients are required by in smaller quantities by the cells when i say cells it is the human body also remember your human body a person's body will not produce everything that is required for our own function or our for our own our health okay so there are some six essential nutrients that every one every human being should consume in our dietary sources so that's why in several countries developed country developing countries and under developing countries malnutrition is an important issue in a country okay so the government state governments with their own schemes social reform schemes by providing Uh, by taking care when a woman becomes pregnant onwards some of the governments will start providing them every week of uh, some some <coughs> uh, flowers uh, right some so which is required for them to take during this uh, pregnancy period they uh, provide some eggs uh, right protein vitamin kind of uh, nutritious foods are being given to the pregnant lady such schemes are introduced in most of the south indian states and even in say in the north indian states some of them are doing it so that way we, we have to address because government is getting lot of fund right so we have to spend it for human it's not any it's not a free scheme okay we are giving it we are we are collecting tax and we are giving back to the society by uh, to eradicate poverty we are providing them some ration or when you to identify government small primary health care centers are introduced in each jillas or each uh, every village there should be a primary health care center ideally we are speaking right so some extension is there which is taking care of that uh, during even our covid situations also we are able to address the people we can have a primary health center where this covid test can be rapid test is being done right so that way this infrastructure development is one of the important thing that needs to be done with respect to the responsible administrators okay so that way and uh, this dietary food is important because malnutrition is uh, a huge issue which is faced because based on because of which we have fatal deaths are there right uh, child children 
death ratio is more in some of the states that is one of the social economic factor which is uh, used to identify the performance of a government or the development of a particular state or a country right that right so some independent agencies do that one they even rank which which state is eradicating this malnutrition in children which uh, state this uh, rate uh, means like uh, during delivery uh, how many kids are dying uh, that kind of all these data can be uh, represented you can refer it to them to identify which state is doing good or bad okay so we actually our body needs uh, six essential nutrients any person should consume right as a, a human being we have to eat and even if it is a, how small a baby can be this she also needs or she or she may also needs this six nutrients okay for example this who has noted down they are the source okay they are the trusted source they list out the essential nutrients which are crucial in supporting a person's reproduction a person's good health and a person's growth okay so they divide who has divided world who refers to world health organization so they divide these essential nutrients into two categories one is micronutrient another one is macronutrients okay so micronutrients are the nutrients which is required by a person in small dosage it's like small quantities we need to consume and whereas and these micronutrients consists of vitamins and minerals micronutrient consists of vitamins and minerals although the body need only small amounts of them but any deficiency in this particular uh, species or particular nutrient will cause severe illness okay the ill health is caused that is why we, the, if any iron deficiency is there calcium deficiency is there we are going to face some illness due to it okay and what is macronutrient macronutrients are the nutrients which a person needs in a large quantity or in a daily basis also okay for example example for macronutrients are water we need to consume water and proteins carbohydrates and fats so these four are some examples for macronutrients as a person we have to consume okay then what is exactly a cellular nutrition what is cellular nutrition by providing the body with the basic elements that it is needs to function optimally on a daily basis okay so these are the products which are meant for cellular nutrition are scientifically formulated to target the willy finger like projections found along the small intestine in our body so that is like finger type thing is there it should go and then so these millions of tiny finger like structures are present they are called as willy project uh, inwards from the linings of the small intestine so the large surface area they present allows them for rapid absorption of these uh, digestion products whatever cell nutrition product we are talking about okay so they will also facilitate this will is also facilitate the removal of toxic components present in the food that we are consuming so the how the healthier the will the healthier the person will be because there will be proper Uh, efficient absorption of the nutrients from the food that is consumed so if you are able to die your digestive system is good your health will be good okay so for that this willy should function better for that willy we have to properly supply the micro and macro nutritions okay and uh, these things what is happening no what is being taking place it is generally called as metabolism so this concept of metabolism which is the transfer of food and oxygen into heat and water in the body are creating energy it was discussed by antony lavoisier who is called as the father of nutrition also he is known as father of chemistry also okay in 1770 he reported that metabolism it is the concept of metabolism he said what is that he said so he identified that this life support activity of simple microorganism is involving several complex biochemical reactions several complex biochemical reactions are taking place in the microorganisms which is supporting which is the uh, helping it to survive okay so he only identified that he said that metabolism is nothing but a sum of such uh, biochemical reactions within a living organisms so a yes, sum of uh, several biochemical reactions constitute metabolism so this metabolism can be of two types okay one is catabolism another one is anabolism 
what is catabolism it is it will catabolism means release of energy will be there okay catabolism refers to release of energy uh, by breakdown of complex organic compounds into simpler forms right uh, high molecular weight compound getting converted into small molecular weight compound and release of energy is associated with it it is called catabolism remember all of them are examples for biochemical reactions okay and similarly anabolism so they also release energy to form new molecules like uh, synthesis of some compounds like proteins from amino acids or sugar from polysaccharides so these are also examples for uh, biochemical reactions and which is coming under anabolism type of metabolism so the metabolism is can be a catabolism or anabolism in catabolism there is a release of energy by breaking of bigger molecules into smaller molecules or uh, complex molecules into uh, simpler molecules whereas in anabolism so we even produce some useful products along with it some energy is released okay so we will really energy, release the energy to form some of the new compounds like synthesis of protein from amino acids or sugars from polysaccharides. Okay, or sorry, sugar to polysaccharides. So even minerals like calcium and iron are important for growth, development and maintenance of the tissues and cell in our bodies. And even vitamins are also important. Vitamin A, vitamin C are important for growth, development and maintenance of the tissues and cells in our own human body. Unlike human being, but the unicellular creatures don't have mouth. Remember, we have mouth to eat, we have a proper digestive system to do these things, right? Whereas unicellular organisms or creatures, they don't have a mouth to eat with it. Or they don't have a teeth to chew something. They don't have a stomach to digest it. Okay. How they, how your cell will eat another cell? They open their they by they open the cell wall and it is just engulfing them into it inside the cell walls of through the membrane okay that's how a cell is consuming another cell it's eating a human cell so it is slowly engulfing it like cell wall will be relaxed so that the other cell it is coming into it and it is trying to swallow it okay so remember it's not having mouth only the cell walls are made to permeable or made to relax and flexible and then it is taking that another human cell into its body. So this is how amoeba eats a human cell. So if you ask me the hierarchy of these structures made up of what is how this uh, system, biosphere system is made up of is, see there are some environmental precursors, precursors that is carbon dioxide, hydrogen and nitrogen. So they have the molecular weight ranging from 14 or 18 or 44. Okay, so that way, then they cons they combine together to form some monomers and precursors like uh, what are the monomers and precursors? It is amino acids, nucleotides, sugars, lipids, ribose, glucose. They are all monomers and precursors. Okay, so they have the uh, molecular weight varying uh, higher than the environmental precursors. And these monomers and precursors of amino acids, nucleotides, sugars, ribose, glucose, all they will combine together to form macromolecules. Okay, so example for macromolecules are proteins, nuclei acids, polysaccharides. Okay, so they will have some molecular weight in the range of 10 power 4 to 10 power 9. And these macromolecules will combine together to form supramolecular assemblies. Supramolecular assemblies they are nothing but they are like multi enzyme complexes or ribosomes or chromosomes come under this supramolecular assemblies and they together form constitute an organelles so organelles example for organelles are whatever is present in the cell inside the cell wall right cis nuclei mitochondria chloroplast for plants so they are called as organelles and several organelles together put inside a cell wall is called cells and a group of cells uh, arranged in a particular order, they are called as tissues. And uh, several tissues together will make an organ in our body. And uh, several organs together makes constitute a organ system. And uh, several organ systems combinedly together constitute a organism. And uh, several organisms are there, we call it as population. And if a population, different set of population, we call them as community people right so then these different community people only constitute our ecosystem and including our ecosystem human beings everyone so we it is called as biosphere okay so i will remain what we have discussed in this lecture
we have seen what is amino acids what is protein what is uh, cell nutrition even for human what why nutrition is important okay so in the next lecture we will discuss about enzymes and fermentation reactions what is enzyme what is fermentation reaction we will discuss in the next lecture thank you so much for joining my classroom i'll meet you in the next lecture bye bye